Welcome to Getting Started with Krita 4. The intention of this video is to help people get started very quickly with Krita if you're familiar with other digital painting or with earlier versions of Krita. If this video doesn't give you the information that you need, check out my Krita How To playlist. When you first start up Krita, it will look something like this. So don't ignore the community user manual and getting started. These are very helpful links if you're not familiar with Krita. In this video, we'll walk through the steps of bringing in a scanned image, inking it, and then coloring it. So first, we select File, New, and we can select the type of document that we want. Um, if you don't already have a predefined size, for example, this one here is a YouTube uh, HD that I've created, you can set the width and height and resolution, and then you can even save it as uh, a name that you'd like but I'm going to create one as a YouTube HD uh, size. Now the first thing you want to know is the layout of Krita can be customized easily and there's lots of ways that you can customize Krita but to start off with notice up here in the upper right there is a little button that you can click and you may not it may go off the screen but you can see these workspaces now that's an, a quick easy way to do it but if you go to window workspace you can see that you have these different uh, options that you can have so I can select an animation uh, layout or big paint or whichever one that you want and the, so here is the default layout now in the default layout you'll notice over here there's a number of different brush presets and so you can select different types of brushes to uh, draw with um, and so each of these have different uh, feel to them so to start painting or drawing just select this paintbrush tool right here and then you can select these different types of brushes and start drawing on your screen to erase things there is actually an eraser type of brush that you can erase with either hard or soft to those types that you want and it's also a button up here so notice if we have from drawing here this button is not selected but I can click on the button and it will erase to clear the entire screen you can select edit clear another thing that you can do is you can actually create a button on the toolbar so to do that we can go to settings um, custom configure toolbars and on here there's lots of different uh, options if you pay attention we have the main toolbar selected and then there you see the icons for new open save undo and redo so that's this portion over here then we also have the brushes and stuff and that's all of the other uh, options that you see on the toolbar so to add the uh, clear button I can just go into the filter and type clear and we see that that button is right there and I just select it and then click on this arrow and it will move it over and then I can place it wherever I would like it to be and select apply or OK now I can go in and just click that button so I can draw on the screen and then quickly clear now let's take a quick look at the toolbar over here we have vector tools up top then the one button for the brush and then the other tools here are for the normal drawing of lines and, and shapes then we have the movement and crop tools then the uh, selection tool color selector and magic wands and gradients and then we have uh, here some the selection other selection tools over here now before we start uh, pulling in a, a drawing and coloring it I want to first talk about the text tool because it's a little bit uh, strange so the way that you use this tool is that you select a text button and you drag an area where you're going to place the text and what will happen is a dialog comes up with some default text in it you simply highlight that default text and then type in whatever you want or backspace or just edit it like any other kind of box so here I'm going to select Krita, uh, Krita and you can see the font type and the font size and if I click Save it will save it there 
So I can go in and change this uh, to something else and save and it will save it there. I can also of course change the font size and things like that and click save and those changes take effect. Okay so that's a little bit strange but not too bad. You've got that uh, dialog coming up and we can close that. To move the text I can't just select it and resize it like you can in many other programs. Instead I'm going to use the move tool. I'll click on that and now I can move the text. Again not too bad but how am I going to edit this? Well, that's the kind of a strange part. If I want to edit text that's already there, I select the text tool. And then as I hover over the text of interest, it goes from a dotted line to a solid line. So I can click on that. And then I have to know where the tool options are. Now, in the default layout, you may not even see them. But here's the tool options right there. And if you scroll down, you can uh, edit the text. So to find the tool options, you may want to select um, one of the different workspaces uh, depending upon uh, getting it to show up better. But you have to know where that tool options box is. So when I do that and I click on the edit text, then the dialog comes back up allowing me to edit the text. And again, I can save that if I want. Again, that's a little bit strange, so I wanted to start out with that because you may want to add text to your drawings. Okay, so let's walk through the exercise of importing a drawing and coloring it um, and see the steps that we need. So rather than selecting File, Import, you go to Layer, Import, Export, and Import a Layer. So go ahead and select whichever uh, image that you want. Now notice it doesn't, uh, it's probably a different size than what you're interested in. So I'm going to select this transform a layer or selection tool. And I'm going to zoom out. To zoom and pan I can use the mouse wheel. And to pan I press shift and uh, left click and I can drag around. So I zoom out And now I can see the uh, handles for resizing my image. This one has uh, a number of different things on it, so we want to show how we can deal with that. So I'm going to press Shift, and I can resize my image, and then just drag it over. So I just resize and move it until it's the size that I want. The next thing I want to do is fill a layer with a different color so that you can see some of the things that are going to go on next. So here we can see the clothing um, uh, page and underneath that is layer 2. So I'm going to select layer 2 and then I'm going to change a color. So I do that with the advanced color scale over here and I am going to change it to something pink so it's very obvious uh, what's underneath. Then I'm going to select the fill bucket tool here, the fill tool and I am going to also click on the tool options here and notice I can um, have these options limit to the current layer but I'm going to unselect that and I can set the th threshold and grow selection and a number of other things so I'm making sure that layer 2 is selected and I'm going to click and notice it fills but we see that the the clothing layer um, is on top of that and that's exactly why I put the pink underneath that but notice if I click on the eyeball here and hide the clothing layer you see that what happened is um, it took into account both layers when it was filling and so because of the threshold it stopped when it hit a line so I'm going to um, undo that and turn the uh, clothing layer back on. Now I'm going to limit to current layer and I'm going to do the fill this time. It looks the same for here but if I hide the top layer we see that we filled that entire layer um, and it took only that layer into account. So now what I'm going to do is just crop this clothing layer so that I only have this little uh, Viking kind of guy here. And there is a crop tool here, but that will crop the entire image. So the easiest way that I'm going to do is select a rectangle. And I'm just going to select an area around that Viking and then just do a control X to cut him out. And that's part of why I have that pink layer so you can see what's going on. And then control V 
to paste him back in and he's pasted in as a different layer so if I hide the clothing layer we see that uh, that Viking is is there uh, cropped out and so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that clothing layer because I don't need that anymore and just click on the trash can to delete Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is ink the character, but before we do, let's take a look at a couple of other things that you might want for customizing. As we said, first of all, this is the default layout. Um, you can go to Window and change to other workspaces. So, for example, Big Paint would look like this. So, you know, if you like your color picker a little bit larger, but of course you lose some of the brushes. Now here I'm only looking at uh, 1280 by 720, so your screen will look quite a bit different, I'm sure. Um, but we can look at those different workspaces, but an interesting one that you might want to know about is minimal. When I select this, these are really nice for if you're working on a tablet or um, a two-in-one or a surface. Um, so you can uh, just use touch support to um, increase or decrease the opacity or the um, uh, the saturation level. Um, here we've got zoom in and out and rotate and brush size as well as clear clear everything. So that's a really nice thing. Um, let me go back to the default workspace. And the other thing that you might want to know about is toolbar over here. If I right click on that. I can select the different sizes um, for the button, so that can be helpful depending upon your screen resolution. If you're looking for a particular uh, tab or option, these are actually called Dockers in Krita. And so go underneath Settings and you can see Dockers, and underneath the Dockers you can see all of the different Dockers that you could select. In this case, we're looking for Layers. So now I'm going to ink uh, my sketch, and so I want to create a layer on top of my artwork. So I just go to the Layers Docker, click on the plus, and now set its mode to Multiply. Now I want to select the proper inking brush or, or pen. Um, here we see with this particular layout, I don't have much room for the presets. Now your resolution might be a lot better and so you might see a lot more, but if you're in a situation like this, the easier way to do this is go to this button that has the four uh, tabs on it or brushes and you click on that and now you can see those brushes much more easily. So I'm going to select this brush here or again a pen it could be so whichever tool that you want. I want that one that has a little bit of variability to it so I'm going to select that one. And now I come off and I can now start inking here. Of course I'm going to select the color that I want and notice that we also have a color history there. So I can now ink on top of my art layer. To change the opacity of a layer, I can just select on this little tool here for a particular layer. So I want to change my um, sketch layer. I want to reduce the opacity a little bit and say OK. And so now I can see uh, my ink layer a little bit better. Another thing that I may want to do as I'm drawing is I might want to change the stabilization because maybe it's a little uh, jaggy here or wavy there. So to do that, I want to go to the tool options and notice there's brush smoothing stabilizer. So I can just change the distance here that will affect how much stabilization occurs. Um, also there's this delay and that's another option. Notice it's got the three little cursor look. So if you have this three cursor look, this delay is on. So that may be helpful for you, maybe not, it's up to you. Now while you're inking, you may want to rotate the entire canvas. So I'm going to zoom out so that you can see the effect of this. Um, but you can do that underneath View, Canvas. Now you can rotate the canvas right or left and notice that there's a shortcut of control with the bracket um, and so you can do that rotation. Also you can use the keys 4 to rotate left, 6 to rotate right, and 5 to center. So that can allow you to get to a, um, an orientation that allows you to ink more easily. 
Now if you're working on a tablet, I would again highly suggest that you use the um, minimal workspace because there you can rotate the canvas left and right or recenter. The other way that you can rotate is pressing um, shift and space allows you to just drag to rotate. Now if you ever want to change the default key settings, just go to settings, configure Krita, and then you can see lots of things that you can change. You can change the keyboard shortcuts, you can change the um, canvas only settings, you can change uh, tablet settings for your pen, so all of these things you can customize. When drawing or inking, it's very common to draw or ink on multiple layers, especially if you have overlapping because you can erase very easily. However, when you're done with your drawing or inking, you may want to merge those layers back together. To merge layers back together, you can right click on a layer and select merge with layer below. Also, you could select layer, merge with layer below. Now that we've finished inking our drawing, we're ready to color. To do that, we want to create a layer underneath the line art. Now the line art should be set to multiply. If it's not, um, just set it to multiply. And then go be below that layer and create a new layer. And make sure its mode is normal. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch to a different workspace, Big Paint 2 here, and we have a palette that shows up here to make it a little easier to select colors. So as I paint, I want to make sure I can select an area so I can easily paint within lines or do a fill. Notice in this layout I can't see all the tools, so I'm just going to click on this little arrow until I get to the um, selection tool. Now it's not this tool, but it's the one near these dotted lines. And see I have a little magic wand looking contigu contiguous selection tool. So now, as I am going to select, I actually want to look at the tool options here, and I don't want to limit to the current layer in this particular case, because I want the artwork to limit my selection, but I want to actually color on a different layer. So I'm going to turn off this limit current selection, and I also actually want to grow or shrink the selection, so I want to grow it a little bit by a couple of pixels here. And when I do that, I click on here, and notice how the bottom part of his uh, tunic is selected. And if I press shift, I can get another part selected, and I can select the top part. Now, the un big problem here is that we can't do a fill because now I've gone into his face area. So I'm going to do Control Z and undo that. Now I'm going to go to the paint bucket and select that. Oops, went too far. And now select the color of interest and fill that region. So both of those areas are filled. But what if I wanted to fill this other area? I could draw more lines in there, but that's not what I want to do. So instead, I'm going to go back and I'm going to select that area. I didn't press shift this time. So now I've selected a completely different region. And I'm going to select this other part. And now I can go in and I can use just a regular paintbrush. So I select a paintbrush. I'm going to increase the size of that paintbrush and just start painting and notice that it won't flow in to the area that is not selected. So I'll just watch around his shoulder and I won't go into the hair. And so that's what we have. And of course I can zoom in closer and deal with some of these other areas that didn't quite get filled in like I want them. Now as I finish painting, I may like the layout in general, but want to change a little bit here. So I can just click on these uh, X's to, to hide a docker. I can also use the resizing uh, bars to change the size of things. Now that you've learned the basics of Krita, you should be able to create any kind of artwork that you love. To learn more, check out my other videos in some of the playlists that I have here on this channel. One other thing that I'll mention before we go is that um, with the brush presets, 
There's lots of brushes that we have here, but these are all the version 4 brushes. If you also want the version 3 brushes, you can go to Settings, Manage Resources, and under there you can see you can import new brushes, um, and you can have um, different kinds of brushes, like I've got here with Krita 3, and some uh, GD Quest Lite brushes, and they are typically on the inactive list, and you can move them between the active list and the inactive list by clicking on that little arrow selecting and then clicking on the little uh, greater than or less than signs. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's helped you get started with Krita. Um, if you have a specific thing that you want to know about or something that you've just forgotten about, I have other videos in the Krita how-to that are just very short videos and show you specifically how to do very specific things. Enjoy creating with Krita.